YouTube as it going the goat house is back and yes my shirt is the same exact color as the green screen so we're rolling with it though and it goes well with the Eagles which shows uh, Eagles chain here from the GLD shop 33% off code goat also got code goat for liquid IV but power rankings it's been a bit since we've done power rankings love doing these we're going to go from 32 to 1 today is May 18th. So it's kind of post-draft. I was kind of waiting for some big signings to happen. Some signings have happened because there's still some big free agents out there. But uh, we wait, waited long enough. We'll do another one of these. I'm still going to go team by team, game by game, record predictions. That could change some things. Uh, but this is just based on – I went through and evaluated rosters more, changed my thoughts a little bit more on some teams. So it's kind of what it's based on, how I think they can, how good they are, how I think they can perform uh, in big games this upcoming 2023 season. Like, subscribe to Notification Design. We've been getting going on the YouTube shorts and TikTok, so check those out. Links pinned in the comments for anything you are looking for. Um, starting at number 32. It looks like a gray shirt now. It just looks straight gray when it's green. Uh, it's actually more like a teal, so I don't know. Very strange. Uh, but the Cardinals are going to be at 32. Now, if Kyler Murray was 100% healthy and we knew he was playing from the start, it would probably be a little bit different because now DeAndre Hopkins sounds like he's going to stick stick around and the coaching staff could be better. It's a big adjustment, though, big system change. Honestly, even when Murray comes back, it might be, again, a little bit of an adjustment for him. Uh, the defense will be a work in progress. I did love their draft. Uh, I love the draft picks that they got on top of that. Uh, for the future. So I think the future is bright there. Um, if they are fully healthy again, they'd be, they'd be a little bit better, but uh, it's still going to be a little bit of an adjustment period. Uh, offensive line could struggle. They, get, they did get better at Paris Johnson Jr. there. So um, we'll see. Uh, 31, I got the Buccaneers. We, we're seeing them down here, but I mean, they made the playoffs last year, but they weren't really a good team last year. And I don't want to base everything off because they did this last year, so they'll be this this year. I'm not really about that, but I didn't think they were a good team last year, and they lost the GOAT, Tom Brady, who led that team, who ran that offense, basically. And Baker, I'm not one of those ba Baker haters. Obviously, he's not the best quarterback in the world. He'll be a little inconsistent. He's got some of the, uh, he's got some of that clutch, you know, that dog in him a little bit, too. Um, you know, offensive line could struggle. Uh, they know what they're doing. You know, that they, they, they're not worried about making this team as b the best it possibly can be right now. But, I mean, honestly, the weapons on both – the playmakers on both sides of the ball aren't terrible uh, at all. Uh, they did lose some DBs. You know, you just – is there enough in the passing game in the offensive line without Tom Brady? It's a big step down to me. And it's a big test for these next couple of years. You can't judge them off just this year, but Todd Bowles as well. I mean, so big, big test these next two years, I'd say. I, I don't think it would be fair just to fully give him a shot off this year alone. Uh, 30, the Colts, I actually think the Colts will be good to start this year. Every year there's those teams that are surprisingly good to start and everyone is like, oh, we were wrong about the, this team. They're going to be really good. And then they kind of come back down to earth. I think the Colts could be one of those teams. Um, just feel like one of those teams, but I think they're heading in the right direction as well. Anthony Richardson got a bright future, but it was one of those guys that probably needed to sit right away, but because you know, he fits the system and they want to get him going and he's the best they got. He's probably going to start right away, which he'll be again. Why they could start good or well early, he might be tough to deal with early. Uh, just a weird game plan. Like, we don't know. Teams don't know have any film on it. It's new. Uh, how do we game plan for this? And him running all over the place, it might be a little tough. Um, you know, defensively, of course, they have some pieces. Hopefully, uh, Shaq Leonard healthier this year. Um, you know, losing Gilmore. Again, I, I thought they had the second best draft, an A-plus draft in all, in all of football. Uh, they're heading in the right direction. They got some pieces that'll help right away. We talk, they're kind of weak at corner right now, but maybe Brents, Julius, I love Julius Brents. He can help right away. Um, I, I just think there's going to be weeks where the offense maybe just, you know, turns the ball over, doesn't do enough, and is the defense good enough to, to win games on their own? I don't think so. Again, I'd watch out for them to start pretty strong. Another team that's in the same boat is the Chicago Bears, who definitely got better. I mean, they were the worst team in football last year, so they got better. And they could be a sneaky team, I guess, depending on how Justin Fields will play is what I first want to say. But then I kind of go back. And because if that's the case, I probably would have put them higher, but I want to go back and actually I'm going to say it depends on the defense on how, how sneaky this team could be because fields. Yeah. I mean, still a little bit of a, this year's a test. It's a little bit of a test because, um, he needs to get better as a passer, but he has the traits to be a great passer. So it's not, I'm not one of the people that are going to say the guy can't pass. He definitely can pass the ball. You know, no question about it. He has the traits, but 
Can he process? You know, up here, that's the thing. Can he get the ball in time? Can he stay in the pocket? Because there was times where the pocket was not a whole lot, when the pocket was clean, and he kind of ran away, ran outside. He needs to become, because right now, you know, he has the makings of a pass-first guy. But right now, he is a, he's better at running um, into actually, you can get all the highlights and the stats together, you know, with the running ability, but to actually win the games, execute that down, down the line, it'll be better as a passer. So that's where I'm waiting to see with Justin Fields. But why I say it's more on the defense is because I think either way, the, Bear, the Bears will put up points, you know, because Fields should be better this year than he was last year. The, the weapons are better. The offensive line should be better. I mean, we can't expect at day one <clears throat> to be, I think they'll actually be good earlier in the year. I think they can start like five and two, five and one. Then the five and two, maybe the way I was looking at it, and then kind of come back down to earth. So that's a team to watch out. I'd say bet on them early. Uh, but I think they're going to lose. It's kind of reminded me of what I was saying about the Lions last year at this time, who end up being better than expected, but they still fell short, right? They still didn't make the playoffs. We knew they were up and coming team. They had a lot of upside. They're going places in the future, not quite yet. Then I said what I said about the Lions was that, and that they might lose a lot of close games in shootouts, which actually was the case and what kind of held them back just short from making the playoffs, even though they were playoff worthy at the end. I think the Bears could be like that this year. So they're kind of the Lions just a year behind. And you could say they have more upside because the amount of picks they have coming you know, coming up in a field kind of gets the processing down. He's going to be special. Like he's either going to be a, you know, he's going to be just a run first quarterback or he's going to be great. Like it's no in between really there. So, um, I think the offense will produce, though. It, you know, you can't... Uh, there's a lot of optimistic people about the Bears. I, I don't know if that's fair, though, because it's still... It's a rebuild team. It's the team of the... Maybe of the entire future of the NFL. You, I mean, maybe that's a little much, but the way they're set, the young players they have, but the way they are set up for the future, you know, so do you want to judge a team like that off of 2023? I'd say no. So, uh, again, another team that will bet on to start hot. I think they'll come back down to earth a little bit, though, but they got a future... We'll see how, what Fields can do if he can take that step up, you know, up here, up top there this year. And what would the defense will still struggle to stop? The, the, the pass rush is the issue. The D line, the pass rush, linebackers got better. Tough to play behind that group. So the run defense and the pass rush could still struggle. Uh, Twenty eight. I'm gonna go with the Rams. Tricky team to rank because well, the defense is gonna be it's gonna struggle. You know, it's Aaron Donald by himself out there. I mean, you might have two rookie starting pass rushers possibly. Um, they, they moved on some of their best players. They moved on from Aaron Donald on defense, but some of the other best players, a lack of pass rush, lack of secondary. Of course, Raheem Morris is a solid defensive coach, but the defense will struggle. Offensively, like they could be really good. Like there's another team that can lose a lot of games in shootouts and they can win games in shootouts. It's just how healthy will they be? But they are healthier than last year, you know, looking at the quarterback, you know, receiver, talking about Cooper Cup, uh, offensive line. Um, you know, so uh, it'll be coached well on offense. It's just how long will the, you know, mainly Matt Stafford and the offense line, how long will they last? That is the question. The defense is just so rough. If I can trust the off, even with the defense, the way the roster is, if I can trust that they fully healthy the entire year, um, I'd rank them better. You know, they would lose games because of their defense still, but I'd rank them better. Um, you know, if they're not going to be, if it's going to be like last year, like almost right out, out the gate, like early, they're, they're beat up. I'm going to rank them lower. They're going to be the worst team in football. You know, if the injuries are, you know, with Stafford, you know, just, you know, if they're down a quarterback with this defense, like they're going to be lower, you know, so they are so tricky to rank because of that reason, but they know what they're doing. I, I think they're, I think them and the Bucks, like smart teams, championship winning organizations, they know what they're doing. Like they're putting them in the conversation of Drake themselves in the conversation of Drake may Caleb Williams, et cetera. You know, I think that's what they're doing, but their offense can win them some games. 27, Washington. There's a few teams that I end up being lower than I thought I would be, which probably sounds funny, but I really sat down and evaluated some rosters post-draft here, kind of compared teams, which is tough to compare just two teams because we're ranking 32. Um, and, you know, Biennemi's offense could be deadly. It could be, it could be tough to game plan for. Uh, they have a strong running game. They have strong running backs. I like Sam Howell out of North Carolina. I liked him. There's going to be some growing pains. There's going to be weeks where they struggle to score a little bit. The offensive line could hold them back as well. I like the receivers. But, you know, there's, there's going to be weeks where maybe they're flashy on offense, but there's going to be weeks where the offense just can't do much. And you look defensively, and defensively is actually where I may be a little lower than I thought I would be because two years ago, I'm like, this defense is about to be elite, and they weren't even that. I wouldn't even know. I don't think they were even good two years ago. Like, it was so underwhelming. Last year, I'm like, they could be elite, you know, but are they going to be underwhelming again? They were in the middle of that. Like, they were a pretty good defense, you know, but they're still, based on the talent, I know Chase Young missed a bit last year. 
still underwhelming. But then this year, it's like, yeah, what is Chase Young going to give us? Montez, Montez Sweat's been a little underwhelming. Uh, the interior is just fine. Lose Cole Holcomb. You know, linebacker unit's a little sketchy. Secondary and the safeties are all right. You know, I like Emmanuel Forbes. How much is he going to give right away? Um, so now I'm not going to put the, those expectations on the defense. And then we kind of be middle of the pack. Maybe a little better. It should be better than middle of the pack, but around that range. So it's... You know, what are they relying on? What side of the ball could by themselves win them football games? That's the tough part when it comes to me but Washington. Titans at 26, they're tough too because I, I the defense is really good. I think people underrate that defense. Like that defense is really good. They're the best stop in the run. They were two years in a row. They could be three years in a row. I mean, that's big. If you can stop the run, you can win football games. You know, that's actually huge because uh, it's bigger than people think. And they got a pass rush. I mean, Harold Landry's coming back. They had Arden Key. Danico Autry's a stud. Another underrated player. Um, David Long was big for them last year. They did lose him, but they seem to be good at coaching linebackers. Secondary could be better. I mean, teams kind of just throw, throw, throw on them. They throw on them more than anybody else because you just cannot run on them. So that's there's more attempts against them. So they'll get beat here and there. Uh, the defense will single-handedly win them football games. And I wanted to put them higher just because of that. But... The offense could struggle. I mean, you thought they were stacking boxes against the Titans before, Derek against Derrick Henry and the Titans before. They're gonna really, they're really gonna do it now. And Derrick Henry, I don't think they're gonna take like a big step down or I'm like I'm not gonna call him a declining running back at all. You know, he's still the king, but he's not gonna get any better, right? So handling, you know, that that many stacked boxes is gonna be brutal. And the offensive line at first, I'm like, yeah, it got better. It was brutal last year, but I'm like. You know, I mean, adding Strontzi, they did get better. But, you know, is it, you know, right away, is it going to be better? It's kind of the question. They were really beat up at the end of last year. So they could be sneaky if they're healthy and the defense is playing to where I think it could play. But I, there's going to be so many games where that offense is dropping, you know, 10 or maybe 10 less, 13 less points. You know, so that's a tough part. Uh, I actually have the Broncos at 25. I was going to put them higher, but I'm sitting here just thinking, you know, it's, it's pretty tough. You know, it's pretty tough with them because – Russell Wilson was – the offense and Russell Wilson was – they were so bad last year, like so bad. And Nathaniel Hackett was so terrible, like very terrible too. But the players were mainly Russell Wilson. He was terrible too. Like he was bad too. So it's like, all right, you get Hackett out, you get Peyton in. That's a big step up, right? It's a big step up. But now we need the quarterback to make a big step up, like a huge step up. We need them to connect. We need them to work. Not only that, but to make that huge leap. Because last year was just bad. It was just bad. And they, it will be better. But how much better will it be? And like you think about it, you know, who really worked in Sean Payton's offense? It was Drew Brees in his prime the whole time. I mean, uh, it was a struggle. I mean, it was a small sample size, but a struggle to find a quarterback after that. So, uh, I mean, it's there's no guarantee here on how much better Russell Wilson will be. In the offensive line, he gets better at McGlinchey, but it's still like, you know, is it the greatest in the world? They have weapons. I mean, we'll see how healthy Javante Williams is. They might be able to run the ball. The defense looks pretty good on paper. I mean, the pass rush could be hit or miss. Like, could be like super, super flashy one week, not so much the next week. Patrick Tan's a stud. Justin Simmons a stud. Um, you know, losing Draymond Jones. That wasn't a huge Zach Allen guy. Vance Joseph's all right. You know, he isn't. You know, last year, Evero in his defense or the year before, Vic Fangio in his defense. He's not there, though. Like, he's okay. He's decent. Um, you know, I would say he's good, but he's not there. So, it's not like, you know, last couple of years, it's like the defense is winning them ball games that they're not winning because the offense is that bad. It, the, will the defense be that good? You know, will it be that good? I think it's going to be good. Will it be that good? The offense is really going to have to pick it up. So, some questions there. They're a tough one, too. Uh, the, now, we're going through a series of teams that I thought I would rank – uh, higher, the Bron starting with the Broncos. But now the Panthers, I thought I would rank them higher uh, because I like Frank Reich. I know he didn't fully get the job done in the past, but I like him. Uh, offensive line really stepped up last year, so it can step up again. I'm not worried about – it's weird. I'm not worried about the Panthers' offensive line. Bryce Young, super talented. He will have his growing pains, though, You know, especially you know being undersized. He's taking some hits in the past as well. Um, you know, just dealing with NFL speed, NFL, I mean, he's got the speed, but size, you know, they're, 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 and he, he's going to make those flashy, flashy plays, but there could be some growing pains. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to put, I'm not going to throw too much expectation on him. Um, running game is, should be okay. I don't think it's going to be crazy good, but it's, it's going to be good. Uh, receivers. Yeah. They added a lot to it, but I'm sitting here thinking like, 
Again, there's no guarantee there because Adam Thielen took a... I like the signings. He's a smart guy. It's good to have a rookie quarterback. He's still decent. He took a big step down last year, though. DJ Chark, it's kind of, you know, it's a good signing. Um, you know, how much are we going to get from him every single week? Uh, you know, I like Jonathan Mingo. I like his upside more so to grow with Bryce Young. So there are, it's like consistency is where we're at. Like, is the offense line going to be great every week? No, it, I mean, no, you can say this about everybody, but it's, I think it's going to be a lot of you know, the quarterback, the receivers, the running game. I think it's kind of be back and forth, back and forth, you know, um, or split, you know, throughout this year. And then defensively, I like Evero's defense coordinator. I love Brian Burns. Always been a Brian Burns guy. Derek Brown should step up a little bit. Um, here's the thing, though. I and J.C. Horn's great. Got to stay healthy, though. That's the that's the key too, health. Uh, but love me some Shaq Thompson, and I love me some Jeremy Chin. How will they be used in this defense? Love Evero. Love his defense. Linebacker usually isn't a spotlight on that defense. It's like the least most least important thing. Uh, and then, yeah, where are they going to use Chin? Like all over at linebacker. I mean, that could be fun. But are you going to get? You know, is he going to be able to make the plays and coverage that he should be able to? But there's some questions there. Uh, and the pass rush really feels like it's being carried uh, on paper right now by Brian Burns. I really thought they would sign Leonard Floyd. The positive is Leonard Floyd is still out there. But as I'm looking through this roster, I'm like, yeah, there still are some questions. They're not ready to win a lot of games right now. They can win some games. They could be sneaky. But I think there's, I think we're gonna see some growing pains and some inconsistencies. So I ended up being lower on them than I thought, and the Falcons too. I was kind of in the same boat with them for different reasons. But the Falcons got a pretty good roster, so that's why I was gonna be higher. I mean, they're gonna run the shit out of the ball, you know, led by Bijan Robinson and company, Algier, Cordero Patterson, the hybrid player, uh, great offensive line, love the offensive line. Arthur Smith's got a pretty good scheme, pretty good playbook. Uh, really good for running the football, controlling the clock, time of possession. So that's going to be great. And they add more talent. Huge Jesse Bates guy. Huge AJ. I mean, they had AJ Terrell already. They add on Yamada. I don't know how much Clayus Campbell is going to give you at his age. He'll give you something. Um, Caden Ellis could be the sneaky addition. Uh, you know, and you know, they didn't go crazy in the draft. I know Bijan's kind of the crazy guy in that draft, but you're sitting here and you're looking at like, you know, it's a pretty good roster, but quarterback is a question with Ritter and I don't think he's going to be awful or anything, but you know, that's a question, even though he's got a good offensive line and then looking at also on the offense, you know, you have London and Pitts, like big time players, but you know, I thought there was going to be, I thought there was more there. The more I started looking at it, I don't know if there's a whole lot there besides that. And then and then pass rush. They might they should be able to get interior rush. Edge rush is kind of a question. Some young guys could step up. But two, just I mean, how important is that? Quarterback and edge rush, pretty important. So that could hold them back a little bit. But I did I liked what they did in the offseason. They're a little tricky. I mean, there's gonna be weeks where they just run the shit out of the ball all over teams and, and, and they'll make they'll get turnovers on defense and they'll win because of that. There's probably gonna be weeks where they're gonna rely on the pass. Maybe they don't get it done or they you know the opposing quarterbacks got all day to throw. They get it done through the air. Um just throwing the ball away from you know Terrell and Simmons is kind of a gonna play single high a lot probably. So or not Simmons, uh Bates, excuse me. Um so that that's a tough thing with the Falcons. Uh, but they got better. I mean, a sneaky team. It just feels like every team in the NFL is good. I don't want to really want to knock teams too much. I'm kind of just explaining why they're not super high. Uh, the Texans are pro this is probably the highest you're going to see them. I almost want to put them higher. Actually. I think people think Texans. All right. 30, 31, 32. Like, eh, I'm going to say no, you know, they should be a lot better than that. Uh, they get a good coaching staff, but I guess we got to wait and see how they perform. You know, D'Amico Ryans hasn't been a head coach yet, but I mean, this is one of the best defensive coaches in football. Um, he's going to get that defense going. Like He he made players better. Um, you can see he can call plays defensively. You can see it if you watch the game. Uh, you know, I always thought like the 49ers secondary, he had them playing better than expected because of that, because the coverages he's putting them in uh, on being unpredictable. Uh, and, of course, he did have big-time playmakers like Nick Bosa, Fred Warner. You know, he doesn't have those guys there, and there's more too, but he doesn't have guys like that there. But he's got good enough young freaky athlete players uh, I mean the corner group looks really good right now like it, it could be better than what they had in San Francisco honestly 
Um, safeties look fine. He's got Jimmy Ward who can play in the slot or he can play free safety. Uh, Petrie was fantastic. He's going to be fun. I mean, he can be like a Hufunga-like player for D'Amico Ryans, which Petrie's got way more upside than him. Uh, they have Will Anderson. Like, he's a rookie, but the rookie is going to get after the quarterback. They add Sheldon Rankins for the inside. They have a bunch of young players that are going to continue to develop, continue to get better. Uh, don't forget about Christian Harris, at linebacker. Um, they add Denzel Perriman, who gets the job done. He's not, like, super flashy, but he'll he'll, he'll fill, fill holes and fill lanes and make tackles. And Ryan's is going to have this defense playing good. Like, he'll have, you know, not going to be great, but they're gonna have, he's going to have him playing good. And then offensively, it's going to be like a 49ers type offense as well, where they're going to run the ball to open up the pass. They're going to manage the time of possession. They have a good running game with uh, Damian Pierce, who was solid last year, and they had Devin Singletary. Uh, you know, they, they, the offensive line's good. It, it's good on paper. I would imagine it produces at, at somewhat of a similar rate of what it looks like on paper. Um, Stroud was the most pro-ready quarterback, the most accurate quarterback. They're going to simplify things for him. They're going to run play action. He's going to hit the open receiver. Like, he's going to do, he's got to do the job that Jimmy Garoppolo did in San Francisco. But whenever Jimmy Garoppolo got knocked, it was mainly the downfield ball. Stroud's got a better downfield ball than him day one. You know, so... Uh, I guess the receivers are the question. Um, I think some guys can be sneaky and be better. And, you know, don't forget about Dalton Schultz, too. That's part of the, even though he's a tight end, it's part of like the the, the, the weapons in the passing game. So, uh, you know, the Texans are going to be sneaky. They're going to be sneaky. Um, who I was saying that over and over the sneaky team was last year was the Jags. Who was I saying the year before? The Bengals. Did I predict those teams to be as good as they were? No, I didn't think they were going to, in, in those years, no, I didn't. But I was calling them sneaky. Uh, so now I'm going to call the Texans a sneaky team. Do I think that they can be way better than I was calling those teams sneaky and they end up being way better than expected? Could the Texans be better, better than I even I expect? Yes, absolutely. Do I think they'll be as good as last year's Jags or the year before Bengals? I don't. I don't think they're going to be that good. Um, I really don't. But sneaky, and they, and they can win nine games. I, think, I don't think that's out of the question. So uh, I think that's kind of the ultimate sleeper team right now. Packers at 21. Um which I think could be better than people think uh, because I, they'll run the ball effectively. Uh, they'll play really good defense. They made the weapons better, but how much better are they right away for Jordan Love? But they would have won more games if they would have ran the ball more last year. I think Rodgers kind of checked out of that because um, they have a really good run game, and now they're going to focus on that, and that'll simplify things for Love. Then again, teams were worried about Rodgers. were like kind of game planning for that, so the run was a little more open. So maybe the run will be less open this year, but it's still really good, the run game. Um, you know, big question with Jordan Love. I think people are kind of expecting him to be last in the division. I don't. I don't really think they. I, I think they're more likely to be second than they would be fourth. I have him at third right now, and then the schedule. Me kind of kind of going game by game, which we'll do in videos in the near future, will tell me more, a lot more. This isn't really a predicting records in order video. Um, but uh, the Packers defense will win them games alone. The run game will win them games alone. So. Uh, but I do have my 21. It's a lot of good football teams. Raiders at 20. They're tricky too because I actually think the offense will be better this year. I mean, Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo. Just forget the system. Just pure talent. Like you almost want to say Carr is probably better. But you put him in this system, Josh McDaniel's system on the Raiders. I definitely say that Garoppolo's better. Um, you know, so that that should make them better alone. They have a strong running game led by Josh Jacobs. They have weapons. Uh, Devonta Adams, etc. You know all those other receivers, but they had Michael Mayer, which I think he's going to catch a lot of balls from Jimmy Garoppolo this year. Offensive line's a little bit of a question: How consistent will Garoppolo be? How flashy will, will he be downfield? You know, is he going to drop it in the bucket like Rodgers did a few years ago to Adams? Like we're not going to see a whole lot of that, um, but it will happen here and there. Um, so I think the offense will be pretty good. I wanted to rank them higher because I actually th I pro I'm. Besides Raiders fans, probably. Raiders fans probably think the, the offense is better than I think. But I think everyone else, I probably think the offense might be a little better than you think. Uh, my issue is the defense. I love me some Max Crosby. The guy is a freaking stud. Uh, and they got other good pieces. You know, Will Chandler Jones step up. Tyree Wilson, if he's right, should be fun. But this defense on paper could be the worst in football. I mean, the secondary is brutal. And a young guy like Marreg could step up. Nate Hobbs, sure. And the linebackers, the, I mean, the rest of the secondary, um, the front sevens, you know, again, there's pieces that could step up. Will they be super consistent? Probably not. Who will be super consistent is Max Crosby. You will probably have to carry a lot. I think they have a good defensive coach in Patrick Graham. 
on paper, on paper, it is pretty ugly. It is pretty damn ugly. So they will lose games in shootouts. And will Garoppolo, I believe in him, will he put out the shootout numbers every week? He won't. You know, so that's the tricky. The more I'm talking, the more I'm like, ah, this might be tough. Defense is going to have to play better than what they look like on paper. 19, the Patriots, who could be sneaky as well, because last year was a stupid experiment with the coaching on offense. Uh, this year they got Bill O'Brien, who's a good offensive coach. Definitely Bama background, Patriots background, Mac Jones background. So Mac Jones can get back on track. Why can't Mac Jones go back to playing like the rookie year rather than last year? Because he, he can. He, I mean, he can. He can do either, I suppose. Uh, but they'll go. They'll get back on track. You know, they're not going to be super explosive offensively, but they could run the ball. Being Ramondre Stevenson fan. Um, I like Belichick's defense a lot as well. Obviously, adding Christian Gonzalez was pretty big. Uh, tackle play on offense was kind of the issue. Their schedule's really hard. I kind of kept that in mind here because I want to put them higher. And this isn't really a record prediction again. I want to put them higher, but I look wrong if we get through the season and they lost a lot of games because... The schedule was just so hard because they so they lost more. Because I think they're going to be tougher than whatever their schedule ends up being, I, whatever their record ends up being. I think they're going to be tougher than that. Like if they're like whatever it is. Like if you look Patriots and here's their record at the end of the year, which one makes more sense? I actually think like the like how they played, like how tough, like how tough they. Are. I don't know if that makes sense. They're gonna be, they're gonna they're gonna put up fights. There, you know, there's gonna be times this year where their record, like, all right, like you're saying, all right, our team's playing the Patriots. Their record, shit. This is gonna be easy. I'm gonna be like, no, that, like, this is a better team than their record. It's kind of me guessing, like, how it's gonna be. So, uh, it's a little tricky with them, uh, but they could be sneaky for sure. They're a sneaky team. Uh, 18, the Saints, very tricky as well because they're talented. They're always talented. It's just health is the is the issue. Uh, another to get more specific, they have a lot of like longtime veterans that are good and they are still good but are you know they're not getting any better are they declining do they have durability issues that's the issue with the saints that's the that's the issue um but car you know which car are we going to get but he should be solid love olave you know camaro is probably gonna be suspended they do bring in jamal williams love me some kendra miller as well um it's really on car there than staying healthy you know how will the offensive line be? I'm not really too worried about it. Defensively, I, the secondary, I'm not worried about it at all. Secondary is going to be fine. Um, you know, it's just like these guys, the guys that held them up defensively, Cam Jordan, Demario Davis, like they're not going to get any better. They take a step down. They don't absolutely have to. It's it's a little tricky. Losing Davenport, it's not the end of the world. Losing Anya Mata is pretty tough. I, You know, the defense was a little underwhelming last year. I think they'll be better this year. They'll be better this year. How consistent will they be? How, you know, consistency and health is kind of the both sides of the ball here. So the Saints are tricky. They're they're, they're tricky. So I do I do have them at the top of the NFC South right now. But um, health health is really the thing there. Seventeen's the Giants. Uh, Seventeen and sixteen. I was back and forth on the Giants. Could can they live up to what they did last year? Uh, I mean, they did win nine games, you know, so you actually want them to step up. They did win a playoff game. That's huge as well. But, you know, bigger picture uh, for the future there is what they want. But, uh, yeah, how will Daniel Jones be off the contract? It's more of a challenge this year. I, I think teams will game plan a little more properly. It's going to be tougher for Jones. He's, he's going to have to throw the ball a little bit more. And he was fine doing it last year. Um, he's going to have to be a little more effective. Take the, He can't stay the same. That's the thing with Daniel Jones. You, even though he stepped up last year, he can't stay – the same because if he stays the same teams will figure him out he'll go back to playing like the Daniel Jones we all know you know he has to take another step that is big for him this year it's absolute the fact he has to he can't stay the same if he stays the same they're going to lose more games um and then what's the thing with Barkley uh, how much are they going to run him you know uh, on on the tag they're running him less at the end of last year as well he won them some games how will the receiver unit play um, it's a little bit up in the air. Not worried about the tackles. Interior offensive lines, a little bit of a question. I'm not really worried about the defense. Um, defense will be good. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, you know, Adoree Jackson, uh, Cave, huge Kayvon Thibodeau guy. I mean, Aziz Ajilari, Xavier McKinney, uh, Deontay Banks is going to be good. Uh, you know, so 
not really worried about the defense, but there was times when they gave up a bit. It was kind of random, and it makes sense, though, because they are a man coverage defense. They will run more man coverage than anyone. They'll blitz more than anyone, and it looks really good. And when it dominates, it dominates, you know? But there are teams that are just really good against that. It's just a bad matchup for the Giants. So that's why sometimes, like most weeks, we're thinking it's a pretty good defense, probably a top 10 defense, probably better than that this year. Um, you know, maybe the best of the best in terms of specific man coverage blitz. Uh, but then it makes sense that there's weeks where it's like they were bad, like because of matchup, because they, it is pretty predictable. You know, it's one of those defenses where it's predictable, like really predictable, but it's still really good. You know, so. Uh, some questions this year for the Giants. Uh, 16, I got the Steelers. Kenny Pickett, could he take that next step up? You want to see more, but I was impressed what I saw last year, especially down the stretch of games being clutch, getting the job done. He's a smart quarterback. He's not super flashy. Sometimes he can escape pressure, throw on the run, but he, I, I think he's pretty smart, you know, and I, I was impressed by that last year. Um, so could, you know, could he take a step up? He kind of needs to, right? Uh, offense line, could they step take a step up? Um they should, but a lot of young guys, you know, how good is Broderick Jones? He's more of an upside guy. How's, how's he going to be right away? Receivers are good. Running game should take a little bit of a step up. Defensively, I do worry about the corners. The corners, um, you know, good draft picks. You can't put too much expectations right away. And then Patrick Peterson out there. Uh, I think they're going to go from more man to zone. I'm actually very much expecting that. They're going to have to with Peterson, Joey Porter Jr. Like press zone makes sense. Um so that could throw some teams off, I guess, because we're kind of used to seeing man from Mike Tomlin. I'm pretty confident they're going to do that. If they play man with that group, those corners are going to get beat in year one quite a bit. Quite a bit. Pass rush should be good, though, about staying healthy there. I, I thought they had the best draft in football, so that helps as well. How explosive would they be on offense? How will those corners be? What type of coverages? Will TJ Watt stay healthy? Those are kind of the questions there. Uh, 15, I got the Detroit Lions, um, who should take a step up this year as well. I mean, they... And this is, I guess, kind of where they finished last year, but uh, and they definitely could be a playoff team. But this is kind of where they started last year was much lower in this. Um, the, I, I've, I, you know, as soon as the season ended, and as soon as I saw Ben Johnson was staying, I'm like, wow, that's huge. I was probably higher on the Lions at that time. Like I was kind of thinking, like, yes, they are going to win the North, and they're going to be better than 15. You no, know, 15's good. Um, you know, and they definitely could still win the North. It's a battle at the top there for sure. Definitely have a legit shot. Uh, but I kind of said not so fast. Let me cool it a little bit. A little bit. Still good. Still can win the division. Still could make the playoffs. Good young team. Been drafting very well. Interesting draft this last year. But uh, got a lot of good young talent. So they only can go up. The only the only positive things can happen going forward. Uh, but then the big questions are, because the defense did give up a lot last year on the ground through the air. Is it going to be like, boom, magic? Like, yes, it's amazing. It's, you know, it's not going to be like that. So they'll probably, it's going to be better. They will probably, you know, give up some stuff. You know, Cam Sutton's a good signing, but he kind of came out of nowhere, and that was for the Steelers where they make corners better than they are. Um, you know, so, I, like, Emmanuel Mosley kind of always hurt. So how much better is the secondary? Actually, I'm a huge Kirby Joseph guy in the secondary, free safety, but he's definitely going to be better, better and better, which is scary. Could be one of the best free safeties in football in a few years. Um, but, you know, so defense is still going to give up some. They'll get a good pass rush. Offensively, it's just really on golf. It's really on golf um, because last year he was good. I think he needs to be better to for them, the Lions, to be better. Um, before last year, he was you know kind of on the bad side. Um, so which golf are we gonna get? I think people just predict what they want to predict, uh, but it's really up in the air. Um, you know, last year was first year play caller for the Lions, Ben Johnson. I love Ben Johnson. You know, but eh, you know, more time, more film comes out. Teams start to game plan a little bit more, so that's going to make it tougher on Goff. He actually saw, that was surprising to see, he actually saw the second most man coverage on his passes in football last year, which is surprising. I think we'll see teams run more zone, and that could cause some turnovers possibly. So he's going to have to get better. He's going to have to adjust. So this year, this year is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, but the positive in that is, is I think based on what they did, they were so dominant like play action game last year that I think it can open up more things because teams can kind of game plan for that specific, those specifics, and it can open up more things. But they have really good young talent. It's tough that Jameis Williams got suspended. At least it's not like super long. Uh, I'm excited to watch Jameer Gibbs, Dave Montgomery. Um, they're going to be a tough team to play. They're going to be good. 
Um, they did lose some games and some shootouts last year. How will Goff respond to teams? They're definitely going to have better game plans this year. How will they respond to that? They did lose some games, I thought, last couple years off of coaching decisions with timeouts, things like that, the very end of games. So some things got to tweak a little bit to clean up, uh, and then they can kind of take that big step. But they, I think they're going to be good this year. They're going to be a tough team. They can win the division. They can win the playoffs. I kind of had to pump the brakes a t- just a tiny bit, tiny bit on them. Um, 14 is going to be the Seahawks. I, I, to me, the Lions and the Seahawks are basically the same team. Uh, to me. Um, the Lions might be getting more hype right now, but Geno, Goff, like, out of nowhere, big-time year. I was more impressed with Geno by a little bit. By, I was more impressed with Geno by a little bit. What One could be bad, one could be good this year, both could be good, both, anything. You know, anything can happen. Uh, They both got solid run games, a good running back duo. They both drafted one to add to that duo. They both got solid offensive lines. They both got good receivers. The Seahawks definitely look a little bit better in that category, adding JSN to DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Um, I trust the all-around coaching a little more in the Seahawks, just a little smarter uh, than defensively. To me, the Seahawks had the best offseason. I'd say that right now with confidence. The Seahawks, free agency, draft, and the Seahawks had the best offseason uh, and the defense will be better. They got to stop the run better, but they had Draymond Jones. He's, he's going to open things up for other guys. Um, cornerback duo should be really good. They add pieces all over the place, you know, uh, this off season. The Seahawks could be sneaky. To me, the Seahawks and the Lions are like the same. Like the defense got to be better. They got to stop the run better. This, the quarterback, could he have another good year? Could he step up? Is he going to get worse? It's like the, they had running back duo. Like it, it, it's, it's, they're almost the same team here. I give the edge in the ranking. I hate comparing two teams, but I, I give the edge to the Seahawks. I think kind of right in that boat for different reasons, but I kind of compare these teams, is the Minnesota Vikings at 13, um, who won the NFC North last year. They win 13 football games. The Lions are definitely coming from them. I think the Bears got a bright future. The Packers got a bright future as well. Uh, I think it's going to be an absolute battle between the Vikings and the Lions this year. should be a lot of fun. You know, to me, I think people look and say, you know, the Vikings, you know, they won't win as many games because they won a lot of really close games last year, and that could be true. Um, will they? Pull, chances are they won't pull off all of those again. But then the question is, how many of those will they be in? Will they pull away? You know, will they not play sloppy in those games? Uh, they will may, may lose some of those close score games. We don't know what situations they're going to be in. Maybe they're good at closing out those games. Um, so I don't know if it's 100% fair to say, okay, they won't be anywhere near as good 13 wins because of that. And their schedule's tougher. I don't expect them to win 13 games, and that could be their ceiling um, because the schedule's tougher. But to me, they won 13 games while having bottom three defense. You can actually argue the worst defense in football. And I think it's a – is myth the right word? I think it's an it's a, it's an inaccurate take to say the defense got worse. I think the biggest problems with that defense last year were coaching. I thought that was very, very obvious. Uh, very, 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 very predictable, constantly in cover two, no man, no blitz. Um, when they did do those things, rarely it worked out. Uh, and the corners allowed separation instantly because they have good pass rushes. The pass rushes didn't stand a chance. So now you add Brian Flores, who's just a really good defensive coach, man coverage, blitz. He'll mix it up. He'll have some cover three. He'll generate pressure in different ways. Uh, they get better at corner. The corner group isn't it's still towards the bottom of the league, but they get better mainly with Byron Murphy. They do get Lewis seen back. who was a first round pick last year. Um, you know, and they add Marcus, they lose, lose Zedaria, Zedaria Smith. Who's better than Marcus Davenport, but they add Mark, Marcus, Marcus Davenport can't talk. So I actually think the defense is better this year, mainly because it has to be like, there's no possible way it could be worse. Like 100% fact, like there's no way it could be worse. So, um, and we know that offense will be good. We know the offense will be good. It's consistent. Second year over under O'Connell. You do worry about like second year coaches. We talked about it with a lot of these teams, whether it's offense or defense. Do they get figured out? It happen. It actually happens more than it does not. They get figured out and they start to go downhill. This one's you know they could, but it's like you know Cousins. We know what Cousins is like. He's he's the same across to his his career. Like I don't expect that quarterback to take a step down, like or to take a step up really. Um, you know, but I'm, you know, it's, it's, we know what to expect from that offense is what I'm saying. So, um, I got them at 13, uh, 12. I have the Browns, which I'll be higher on than people. I believe it's a talented roster. It's, it's the talent on the roster says better than 12, honestly, but they got a good secondary. They have, you know, linebackers could be got could be better, but they got some playmakers. They got that pass rush. Miles Garrett, Zedaria Smith. They finally added interior. They had Dalvin Thompson. who's a stud on the inside. Um, 
you know, that they, they have pieces across that defense. It's been underwhelming, but they get a new defense coach, Jim Schwartz, who's a really good defensive coach. Um, so the defense will be better offensively. They have one of the best offense lines in football. You could argue the best or second best. Uh, they have a strong, strong running game. They add more weapons. They have Deshaun Watson, who's a really good quarterback. I think it's very unlikely he plays the way he played at the end of last year. Is he going to go back to playing elite or was he ever elite or close to elite to Sean Watson? I'm not really saying that either. I think it's more likely he's great than he w- than what he was at the end of last year. I uh, people are kind of just like, yeah, he's going to be shit. He was at, like he was at the end of last year. I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. Um if he is, it's bad. It's a mess over there. The fans he's definitely gone. Um it's bad then, but uh, this team's too talented to be any worse than this. Uh, 11, I'll go with the Ravens. I honestly think, you know, you look across the whole roster and the Browns are probably better. Uh, but the Ravens are just a little trickier and they have more ways to beat you maybe, mainly with Lamar Jackson. Uh, I, I, you know, there might have been times last year where he could have played and maybe didn't hold, you know, saving himself for that contract or he could have ran a little bit more but didn't. It's understandable. That's kind of a positive now. Like we'll get more out of Lamar Jackson, we would think, um, here. Uh, moving forward, the running game should be solid. It was a little underwhelming last year. They had the injuries. It's all about health with them. Receivers have to be better, right? Um, offense, offensive line I'm watching. Um, it, it, people aren't really talking about that. It actually could struggle a bit. It could. How will the health be there as well? Defensively, they'll be solid. I, I don't think it's that, that, I don't know, if, you know, where they were, they could have, they were, they were maybe a lead at one point, but, or, or great, we could say. They're not, they're not there anymore. You know, they're not up there anymore, but it'll be good. I think they, they'll have their really, there'll be weeks where they look elite and there'll be weeks where they look maybe average or below average. Um, it's mainly with the pass rush, I suppose, there. So I got them at 11. They're just as tricky to game plan for. Um, Todd Munkin in there, so it's a little bit different as well. They kind of have that tough game plan factor, especially to start the year. 10, I got the Dolphins all about health with them. This roster is really good, though. Uh, the defense could be the best in football. It really could be. Uh, uh, elite cornerback duo, the best in football. The pass rush is ridiculous. Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb. Who's the bigger name? Bradley Chubb. But I could actually sit here and say Jalen Phillips could be better, and that's a positive. Like, if Phillips is better than Bradley Chubb, you have yourself a ridiculous pass rush duo. Um, linebackers, Jerome Baker, David Long. Uh, Tyndall from last year, the draft, the George prospect from last year, rookie, uh, jumbling up words, uh, Christian Wilkins and the defense is ridiculous. The defense is Javon Holland. The defense is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, not worried about the, the, the corners got to stay healthy, but not, not really worried about it. Offensively. It's good. It's good. But how will Tua be the big question with them actually might, I mean, it is, it's health. It's Tua's health specifically, but I actually want to say it's. Mike McDaniel, I want to say it's that because he looked like a ridiculous coach at the beginning of last year, and Tua looked ridiculous, and then Tua got hurt, came back, didn't really look the same, and it could be because of health, maybe, maybe scared to get hurt again. I don't really think that because he kept coming back, but it could be. It's in the back of his mind. I've seen it before. Um, uh, Teddy Bridgewater from Delvin is an example. I think after he got hurt, I really think it changed him, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't think that was the case with Tua. I, and I actually don't even think he was playing worse because of the injury either. I, I think teams were starting to properly game plan for Mike McDaniel's offense, and he was abandoning the run too easy, even when it was working. It got too predictable. And first-year coaches, we always see it in the second or third year. Sometimes we see it within that first year where they kind of get figured out. I think we kind of saw it. I think we saw it. And it, it could be I could be wrong. It could be the injuries. It could be a mixture of both. So that, to me, is the big question. Um are they easier to game plan now? Are they going to be continue to be predictable? Either way, they're pretty high powered. They could pass the ball. They could be effective running the ball. Uh, offensive line is kind of a question. I mean, they have a stud left tackle in Taron Armstead, but some questions there. But I have questions for them. But overall, the talent on this team is ridiculous. Um, can we get more of a consistent early last year Dolphins teams out, out of them? That's kind of the question here. Um you know, with them. So some questions, but really good team. I think they could have the best defense of football. Number nine, I'm going to go with the Chargers. Huge Justin Herbert guy. Um, I mean, winning is always falls on the quarterback though, you know, and I don't think it's really ever his fault that they're not winning as much as they should be. But, you know, now's the time for him. Just like, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm elite quarterback. I'm going to go win some more football games. 
uh, but he's gonna, you know, need some more help as well. But he does have weapons. You know, I guess what's the situation with Eckler? Uh, they're gonna get Rashawn Slater back on offense. That's big. They get Kellen Moore. We'd think the play calling could be a little bit better. Uh, they could uh, not abandon the run as well, um, especially inside runs. Defensively, you know, one week they're elite and one week they're not good. You know, last year it it, it probably could be the same this year. They got to stop the run a lot better. They took a step up last year, but it still was bad. Could they take another step up? Eric Kendricks could be that addition to help that. Um, J.C. Jackson, could he come back and play better? Asante Sam will continue to grow. Derwin James, pass rush should be good. It's staying healthy there on the, the term uh, everywhere, but the pass rush um, is big. They're high-powered. They're a little inconsistent. They could, it's a team that could be the best team in football or they could be the un- underwhelming team again. You know, that's kind of the Chargers there. Uh, eight, I'm going to go with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence took a massive step up like I expected, like I predicted. Took a massive step up last year. It should have been obvious. Everyone should have predicted it, but I was actually getting a lot of shit for that. So I'm going to talk it here. Um, he'll take another step up this year. Um, so just don't be surprised. Uh, is it going to be a massive step up? It could be. I'm not going to sit here and say it, though, but he's going to take a step up. Um, another year with ETN, this run game, uh, you know, the Calvin Ridley in the receiver unit. Offense line's a little of a question, but I'm sitting here saying, you know, Cam Robinson, Walker Little, uh, Anton Harrison. I know Robinson's going to be suspended, but health is more. Like, if they're on the field, whoever the duo is out of the three, I, I think they're going to play, you know, they're not going to be great. They're going to play Fine. They're going to play okay. Um, health is more of the concern. Walker Little's past had that. Cam Robinson is suspended, and he had the health issues last year. Uh, and I guess how Anton Harrison adjusts going from that Oklahoma RPO scheme to, you know, we'll see, they'll see some RPO and Doug Peterson's scheme, but um, you get the point. Uh, so offensive line, a little question. Defense is solid. You know, it's not the best in football, but it's definitely not bad at all. Like, it's solid. Some young guys should continue to step up. Um, I think it's a unique defense as well. Again, it's not going to be the best of the best, but it could be pretty damn good. So I think you win with both sides of the ball. And I think both sides of the ball can be on the same page at the same time, which is lethal. That's where it gets, that's where you find your best teams in football. Uh, number seven, I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Thought about putting the Cowboys higher. I like the Cowboys for this year. Uh, every year I like them for the regular season, but every year I don't really like them for the playoffs because they can't get over that hump. It just seems like the same teams can't get over that hump in the playoffs. They're one of those teams, but I look at last year and I almost find a positive out of it. Like it was the way they lost was more, was different. I thought like it was really on Dak just throwing the ball to the wrong team. And and they, like if he didn't do that one time, like they might've won the game because the defense was so good. The weapons were so good. They were in position to win. Um, so Dak was, you know, was a little crazy with the turnovers when he came back in last year. And I don't, I don't sit why I don't see why we can't sit here and, and you know, and say that, like, why can't he get back on track to what Dak Prescott is? Like, he was still good last year, don't get me wrong. But, you know, so I think he can play better. Um, offense line's healthy right now. They have more depth than ever. We know the weapons are there. I guess the, how's the new play calling going to be? Uh, but I, the offense is going to be good. And then defensively, it's going to be nasty. Micah Parsons could even get better. Linebacker unit should be better with... Uh, the young pieces they have added over last year's draft, this year's draft that I love, um, you know, and then the secondary digs with Gilmore, you know, digs playing for a big contract that could elevate his game even more. Uh, you know, they got studs, they got studs everywhere. It wasn't in crazy in love with the Mozzie Smith pick, but it helps stop the run on the inside. You know, it helps them. They're going to be better. They're more complete, you know, even though it wasn't the sexiest pick in the world. So Cowboys could be a little more dangerous this year. Perhaps I think it's on, People might say it's mainly on Dak throwing less interceptions. That's fair. I think it's on like the new play calling, new system. You know, how, how will it be? That's kind of the big question. Six, the Niners. Uh, the big question with them is who's going to be playing quarterback? How long are they going to be playing quarterback for? Yeah, who's going to be playing quarterback the most most of the year? I think a big question as well is uh, how will they be going from D'Amico Ryan to Steve Wilkes? Steve Wilkes is a good enough defensive coordinator where the defense will still be really good, but do they take a hit? But they have such talented players that they'll still be one of the very best, if not the best. Um, so defense I'm not worried about, but that's something to keep an eye on. Ryan's to Wilkes, you go from good to good, but will, is it at the end of the year when you're saying they went from great to good, I don't think we'll be saying they went from great to bad at all uh, in terms of the coaching. Um, we're going to be saying they went from great to great or, or great to good. You know, I think that's kind of where we're going to be at. Uh, and then offensively, you know, how the offensive line be, and they coached them very well, but they did lose McGlinchey. 
Um, they're consistently good. We know they'll put up some good fights there. Um, just, I guess the quarterback. Who's going to be at quarterback? How will that quarterback play? How will Purdy be post injury? How will Lance be post injury? I hope I hope Darnold's third string, but we we'll never know. Uh, five going to go with the Jets. Uh, last year they were in. They either won impressive games or they were in ball games while having very bad quarterback play. Now they have Aaron Rodgers. There's no guarantee Aaron Rodgers is going to be elite MVP. He could be that. There's no guarantee. Uh, hopefully we don't have another another Russell Wilson situation. I sure don't think so um, at all. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett is there, though, but I think Rodgers is more running the show. He's not a guy that needs his hand held, anything like that. Running game could be good. Passing game will be good. They have the weapons. Offensive line, It's I think it's good if it's healthy. That's the big if there. That's the big question. Defensively, they'll be good. They'll be, they were solid last year. They'll be, they'll be even better this year. So it's a team that they can go out there and win with lockdown defense, or they can go out and win with – High-powered offense, whether it's passing or running or both on the same page, offense and defense at the same time. So it's a very, very talented team. Um, I guess the only question I have is, like, those Packers teams, like, led by Rodgers that we saw, like, always came up short in the playoffs, always underwhelming, like, dominant, dominant regular season team, always came up short. Now this is a different team. But, yeah, Rodgers was probably better back then. He had some insane offensive lines. Like the way he was able to sit in spots, he was able to sit insane. You know, Devontae Adams in his prime. And again, he's got weapons here. Defense, there was, and this defense could match what they've had. There was some really good defenses for the Packers, but the defense could be the difference here with this one. So my point is there could be a chance where they're just a dominant, dominant, dominant regular season team. And then maybe they're like a one or two, you would think more than one. Uh, ceiling playoff team. I'm not saying that's my prediction. I'm saying that's kind of the question. That's some if there's something to nitpick here. That's kind of the what we wait and see. Four. I'm going to go with the Eagles. They did lose a bit, but it's just still such a talented team, such a tough team to deal with. Um, with Hertz, um, you know, who just stepped up last year. You know, him and AJ Brown, the receiver unit, the running game. Um, you know, they had DeAndre Swift to the mix. Rashad Penny, great offensive line. They're going to be able to run the ball. They're going to be able to throw the ball. Do teams start the game plan a little better for Hertz? I think it's possible. Still, the the offensive production and play will still be very good, even though that's the case. Um, it's like some teams, like you know, do they get game? Like, do they get figured out? Every that's the thing. Everybody gets figured out. The best of the best stay good. They find other ways, or they're just just that good where they stay good. We think the Eagles are on that side of things. Most teams aren't. Uh, defensively, defense is actually the big question for me, believe it or not. Talent-wise, ridiculous, ridiculous. I actually think Jonathan Gannon was, re- Gannon was a really good defensive coach. Eagles fans wanted him gone at the end, you know, um, maybe just because they lost Super Bowl, they were a little mad. But uh, I think he was like, what? how he adjusted his defense for the s- unique players that he brought in. Asan Reddick is a unique player. You have to use him right. He has to be other, like, it's like all about the other pieces around him as well. Um I mean, they're running out there running cover six, which you don't see a whole lot of in the NFL. Like, there's, you know, you remember those times where it's like, man, it feels like there is no space open in the passing game. Everything is covered up by guys like Blankenship and Epps. Like, you know, and they had really good corners, though, and they had Chauncey Garner Johnson. But I don't know, the way he ran things, it just worked so well. And they still have those unique players, some of the, those unique players, and they add, like, Nolan Smith's a unique player. Um, you know, like, Sean Desai, will he figure that? Like, he has to, the players are more important. Like, you work your magic, work your defense around them. Uh, they actually, I could see them struggling to figure that out at first, even though the talent is there. The defensive line's ridiculous, too. Uh, they could actually struggle at first. I could actually see that being wor- way worse than expected. I'm not saying that's it, that's what's going to happen. And then people being like, oh, Jesus, you know, but then they kind of figured out just because the talent, like, all right, this is how we use these guys. This is how we do this. You know, this is the coverages we got to run, um, you know, so and they kind of getting back to normal there. So that's actually what I want to what I'm waiting to see there. Can they use the talent, the unique talent to the best of their abilities like they did last year? You know, I know they couldn't do it in the Super Bowl. It's the Chiefs. It's Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. They're going to score points, you know, so it's different. But yeah. Um, that's the top of the NFC right there. Uh, I got the Bills at three, always towards the top. Can they stay a little more consistent? Can they close out games? Can they take care of the ball? Uh, can they protect Allen so he can take care of the ball at the end of games? That's kind of the question there, I suppose. Can the defense show up in the big games? Um, no Leslie Frazier this year is a really good defensive coach. I know the defense kind of let them down in the postseason. But, yeah, it's because they're a little predictable. Teams just had better game plans. So do they switch up the coverages? They're mainly cover two or two man under. You know, 
I guess it's not really the same because one's zone, one's man, but it's almost similar there. Um, uh, you know, so, but they got talent. They get Von Miller back. Josh Allen's ridiculous, obviously. James Cook can take a step up. They have Damian Harris. Uh, you know, big time receivers, obviously, and big time weapons. I, Dalton Kincaid, was it the sexiest pick in the world at first glance? No, but it means bigger things. Like, it means like different plays, bigger playbook, new looks. Uh, you know, using, you know, an extra tight end, you know, with Dawson Knox, something teams aren't used to using a mismatch guy in the slot to open up things for other guys as well. Not just being that mismatch. Uh, it opens up more things, you know, and so that's what I get excited about. Von Miller coming back to but that that's what I get excited about uh, mainly. So they're, they're already a tough game plan. I think they're more of a tough game plan, not insanely more. The offense line should be a little better as well. Um, can they close out? in the big time games down the stretch? That's the question. But a top three team for me for sure. I got the Bengals at two, and we'll show the Chiefs at one. Um, actually, I've been voicing my opinion on this a little bit. My, my Super Bowl favorite right now, my Super Bowl favorite or to make the Super Bowl the last four years has been the Chiefs, four years straight. Uh, and I've been pretty good with that, I'd say. Um, even when they came up short, it was like, oh, they could have been there. Um, you know, so I will say that this year I'm changing up a little bit. I am feeling the Bengals coming out of the AFC, and right now they're my favorites to win the Super Bowl. I really like the Bengals for this year. Um, but I have them at two for right now. I, I'm just a big believer. Like right now, here we are, May 18th. We're still not fresh, but uh, almost fresh off the Super Bowl victory for the Chiefs. They're currently the best team in football because of that, but because how dangerous they are right now and we're going into week one. The Bengals are a team that could be a little iffy to start the year. I could see it again. I could see them losing the first one or two games again. Uh, not that I'm 100% counting on it, but just right now, just today, it feels like the Chiefs are the best team uh, with the experience, fresh off the Super Bowl, with the talent they have. They have the best player in football in Patrick Mahomes. I'd argue that Joe Burrow is the second best uh, people disagree with me on that, but uh, I guess second best quarterback, maybe I know Josh Allen in, in the conversation for that, but uh, for sure, and then maybe Justin Herbert next. But um, off topic, uh, yeah, I just like uh, you know week one of the NFL season, I'll have uh, you know it, it'll probably be the Chiefs fresh out of the Super Bowl, but I, I'm a big Bengals believer for this year. You know, my th it's not like a bold prediction or anything. Other people are probably predicting that too, but my my picks like that have been pretty accurate at this time or going into year the year. So I, I'm excited about the Cincinnati Bengals for this year. So these are my thoughts. Again, er, you know, the comments are going to be, you're too low on my favorite team. You're hating on my favorite team. I'm ranking every team. I'm giving you your thoughts on my thoughts on every team. I don't hate any team. Uh, and you're going to say, uh, this team, my team got better, but you have them lower than where they were last year. That's not how it is. That's not how it works. It's a different schedule. Other teams got better as well. Every single team you see on here, 32 teams, they all, they all added players. They all, in a way you could argue, got better. Um, doesn't mean they'll be better or worse than last year. Really, actually, people don't realize it really doesn't have a whole, like it's not, 100% like if you added X players, you're going to for sure be better. People like forget that. So I already know what the comments are going to look like. I evaluated the teams. I evaluated the rosters. This is what I came up with right now. I've been pretty accurate. So let me have it all you want there. We're always talking with you guys on Twitter as well. A lot going on there. Links pinned in the comments for that. Anything you're, else you're looking for, sponsors. GLD Shop got some new sick chains. Liquid IV's got some new flavors. We got code GOAT. Uh, like, subscribe to Northgate Zom. Full NFL coverage here. Make sure to check out our new shorts and TikToks. Links been in the comments. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.